Whether you're a developer or a DBA, you're going to be using lots and lots of SQL files. Developers will be building up a series of scripts for each project they're working on. DBAs will have a whole series of scripts, like I do, that you use for managing your instances. But try to control all these files, opening each file in turn, trying to locate the files. is going to be a slow and laborious process. In Management Studio, we have a much better alternative called the Solution Explorer. Here we can create a solution. Within that solution, we can create various projects. And within those projects, we can place all our SQL scripts. So here you can see my solution that I use for all my presentations. Within my solution are projects for all the different presentations that I do. Here is the project for Management Studio 2017 that we're doing at the moment. And here is the list of files that I am using. As well as storing all your queries in here, we can also store the connections to the databases that are used by that project. So rather than having to open up all of these files individually, all I have to do is come over and say file, open, open the solution, and that solution then opens. I can then come down to the project I'm interested in and I can see the list of files that I need. I can just double click on the ones that I acquire, edit, save, or add new files. It makes life so much easier for managing containing your scripts for SQL Server. One thing missing from the Solution Explorer and Management Studio is the ability to link it to Git, which you can do with solutions within Visual Studio. For some reason, it's not been included in SQL Server Management Studio. But there are third party tools that can do that, or you can use the Git tools on the folder where the solution files exist. But Solution Explorer is definitely a brilliant way of managing and controlling all of your SQL scripts. Now all of us have to write code, whether you're a DBA or you're a developer, but writing every line of code from scratch is a laborious process and is prone to mistakes. Now again, Management Studio has come to our aid with what is known as the template browser. And within here are example scripts for just about every single object you could ever want to create within a SQL database. So if I come down here and select database, you'll see we have examples for attaching, bringing online, creating snapshots, creating the database, detaching, dropping, everything you could think of. If I double click on create database, it will place the code into a nice new query window for me. And what is really clever is if I come up to query, we have a new option called specify values for template parameters. And if I click on this, any parameters that have been defined in my template are now listed in this window and I can specify the values for them. So if I put in DB4, click OK, and it completes the template. Another example, if I come down from databases, maybe down to say tables, Click on here, you'll see a whole list of example code. If I double click on the create table, it automatically fills it in. Again, I can come up to query and specify values. And in this case, the, the template actually has default values for all the parameters. I can either accept the current parameters or I can type in my own values. When I'm happy, click OK, and it's now filled it in. I have a standard and consistent way of creating code. I haven't had to type anything in. I haven't had to go and look up the syntax on the internet. It's done all that for me. And using these templates is going to save you a lot of time. It's going to make you a lot more efficient. You can obviously create your own templates and add them to the template browser. So in this way, you can come up with a standard set of designs for your company so that when people are creating tables or databases or writing any other code, they're following exactly the same standard, so your code will start looking a lot easier and better to understand. So do have a look through the template browser. Do consider it as a possible way of working for your company to create standardized, repeatable code. Along with the template browser, there are two other options which are hidden away for some reason under the IntelliSense menu. And these are Insert Snippet and surround with. Now if I click on insert snippet, we get this brown bar 
but there should be a drop down list and for some reason with management studio 17.9 these two options don't seem to work properly i cannot select anything because the drop down list isn't displaying i don't know whether this is a fault with windows 10 a fault in the management studio or a fault with some other dll file so what i have done is i have fired up one of my virtual machines here it is and this is running management studio 17.6 so if i create a new query go edit intellisense insert snippet we now actually get the drop down list that we're after so i can insert a snippet so again let's create a table it's a create table option and it will fill in the basic command for create tables if you've forgotten the syntax for create table this could be an easy way of pulling the code down so if i go to edit intellisense again insert snippet we could have something similar so if i want to say insert login it actually gives me two options login sql authentication login with windows authentication and there we are it's filled it in you go oh yes that's the command we need now what I'm going to do is just highlight this particular command and let's go around again so edit IntelliSense and this time we're going to do a surround with click on surround with and I've got a choice here do I want to surround my code with a begin and an end block surround my code with an if block or surround my code with a while block or a while loop so if I click on while it now fills it in so while with the condition we need begin and end and the code in the middle so this is a great way of being able to build up code really easily as you can see with all these things there are keyboard controls to do this so you don't have to be using the mouse to get it so if you know what you're doing you could be writing code really really quickly without having to resort to actually typing very much management studio has example code either through these two options or the template browser that can provide quick and easy example code for you. So I hope you will find that useful. Now I'm sure there has been lots of occasions when you've been looking at some code and you thought, I need to know a bit more about that particular command or that particular operator. Again, Management Studio can help you. If you have a particular command and you want to learn a bit more, highlight it and simply hit F1. Management Studio will go off onto the internet, go to the Microsoft documentation and take you to the details about that command. And there we have it, the declare command, all the information that you need in the Microsoft documentation on how it works. We can do it with properties as well. So if I highlight the server property, hit F1, that will take us to the documentation again and here's all the information about that server property really really handy in previous versions of management studio you could set the help to look at a local help file now microsoft assume you have access to the internet another really handy feature is uh, alt f1 if you have a particular object within your database so in this case this is a stored procedure i can highlight that hit alt f1 and management studio will go and interrogate sql server and bring back the information about that stored procedure so here is its name the owner the type when it was created and here are all the parameters that go with that stored procedure what type of parameters they are the order they need to be in isn't that really handy again we could highlight this table again do alt f1 it will go and interrogate SQL Server and pull back all the information about that table. So here's the name. It's called employee. It's a user table. It was created in 2015. Here's the details on all the columns, their types, their lengths, their precision, and the collation used. Are there any identity columns? Um, the file group, the indexes, the constraints, everything you ever wanted to know about your table. And you can do this on most objects within SQL Server. So again, information is available to you. Just highlight it, Alt F1. Very, very handy. Now, if you're a keyboard person more than a mouse person, 
a management studio allows you to create quite a number of keyboard shortcuts. So if we come up to tools, options, environment, keyboard, and keyboard query shortcuts, you can assign queries to 10 different keyboard shortcuts. So here we we have the defaults here of Alt F1 gives you help, Control 1 gives you SP Who, Control 2 gives SP Lock. I've added two here. So we have Select Star from Sys Databases that I've added to Control 3. And this one, which is just the stub of a query, select top 100 star from, but no table listed, onto control 4. So if we come back here, just to prove that this does work, if I go control 1, it will automatically run an SP who for me. If I do a control 3, it will run that select star from sys databases. Now the one that was just a stub, here's the name of a table, person.person. .person. If I highlight that and do control 4, then that query shortcut will add person.person, .person, run the query and produce the top 100 rows from that table. So if you find keyboard shortcuts really handy, you can create your own keyboard shortcuts. But just make sure that you don't have any other programs like Zoomit, which I use quite a lot in my presentations, which can clash with those keyboard shortcuts. Now here's one that can, can annoy people quite a lot. Let me just create a table for us. Very simple table. Let me go and find this table. There it is. Now, how many times have you gone in to a table and needed to change its structure? Maybe you needed to change this N varchar to maybe just a varchar. But when you click Save, you get an error message saying saving change is not permitted. Changes may you've made require the following tables to be dropped and recreated and we're not going to allow you to do that. Isn't that really frustrating? Because you think, I just really need to do this. I don't want to have to create a new table. Well, we can fix that very easily. If we come up to Tools, Options, come down to Designer, Table and Database Designer, you'll see that we have this option here called Prevent Saving Changes that Require Table Recreation. If I untick that, click OK, come back here again and click on save. It will now make the change for us. And there we are, we've now made the change. The reason this option is turned on by default is, is because SQL Server does need to create a new table, copy all the data from your old table to the new table, and then delete the old table. This was easy because there were no rows in the table, so it was a very straightforward thing to do. If you had 100 million rows in that table that you were trying to change the structure of, SQL Server will have to copy those 100 million rows from one table to the other, and that could take a long time. Do be careful if you intend to turn that option off, exactly what the consequences can be if it's a very large table that you're trying to alter. Like most Windows software, Management Studio will try and look after all the query files that you have open and they are being edited. If we look at Tools, Options, and then Environment and Auto Recover, we can decide how often Management Studio will take a copy of all your open, unsaved query files and store them somewhere in case Management Studio or your computer crashes and how long it will keep those auto recover files for. So the default is five minutes for the auto save and seven days for keeping those auto recover files. So it's definitely worth checking that those values match what you need. If it tries to do an auto save more often, Management Studio may become slower. If you leave that auto save too infrequently, then you may lose data if the system crashes but make sure that those values are set to suit your requirements. I'm sure we have all seen the zoom function down here. If you want to change the size of the text in our query window, it only affects the query window. It doesn't affect any of the menus and it doesn't affect the object explorer. Coming back to query shortcuts, if we click on tools, options, 
come down to keyboard every single command available within management studio can be assigned a keyboard shortcut and these are all the commands that are available within management studio many already have keyboard shortcuts so if i select print for instance file print as we know is control p everyone's used to that but if you need to look at print preview it doesn't have a shortcut you could define one now if i was to select close one thing that i do quite on a regular basis is the option to close all bar the one query window that i'm using and you'll see it doesn't have a shortcut assigned to it at the moment so i could choose a particular shortcut sometimes trying to find a key combination that isn't already used can be quite tricky so i'm going to go shift Control alt m because i know that isn't used at the moment and i'm going to assign that keyboard shortcut to close all but this if i click on assign excellent click ok now in theory if i go shift Control alt m it closes all the query windows isn't that brilliant so much easier than right clicking on the menu and close all documents or close all than this and it's even put in there the keyboard shortcut that i have assigned to that particular option so if you have things that you're doing regularly that you have to use the mouse for you want to be more efficient assign a keyboard shortcut to that particular command and you can simply hit those keys and it will work for you a quirky little feature that came into management studio in 2008 is something called the task list if i come up to view click on task list opens this window at the bottom of the screen and this is where we we can enter tasks and other information about things we're working on unfortunately there's a bug in Management Studio 2017, and although you can see the task list, you can't add anything to it. And this bug existed in Management Studio 2016. You have to go back to Management Studio 2014 to find a version of task list that actually works. And I have this running on my virtual machine. And if I go from here, click on task list, we end up with a screen at the bottom but we actually have the extra line which is missing where we can actually create tasks so i can create a task i can give it a name don't forget to add the new code i can give it a priority so this is a high priority and there we go so we can build up a task list here we can refer to it see what we need to do and then when it's finished we can mark it as either complete or incomplete so that one has now been completed it's a shame that this bugs doesn't seem to have been fixed in the last two releases of management studio because this can be quite handy if you've got lots of code you're working on you need to make a few notes to remind yourself that tomorrow morning maybe what you what you got to last night or over the weekend so you know where to carry on it's a bit disappointing that Microsoft managed to put a bug in the last two releases of Management Studio and not actually get around to fixing it. In this one in Management Studio 2014, we can only enter a description into our task. In Management Studio 2016, we can also add a project to file and a, a line number. But without that missing line to allow us to put in to actually create tasks, and it seems rather disappointing that Microsoft have left a feature unusable for such a long time but there we go i hope these videos have been a useful introduction into how you can make management studio more useful more efficient for you i do recommend that you have a look through all these options in management studio there are lots and lots and lots of them which can make your life much easier much more enjoyable and much more useful when you're using management studio so don't be afraid to have a look and explore some of these features but i thank you for listening i hope that your use of management studio has now been improved thank you very much